So I'm going to repair this Ecotherm in the Fusion unit. This is the CB160. Now this unit here is a fault. It's described as light goes on but not registering. I actually repaired this one before. This actual unit. I had a broken wire and I repaired it like I did before in the other unit. Which I've done a few videos on. I've done a couple of videos now on these. So I repaired this end and it still seems to be okay. Doesn't feel like it's got any stretch in it. So it still seems like it's okay. The other connector on the other hand it has some stretch in there so I think this wire is also gone now the last unit I repaired both wires were gone so I think maybe what I need to do is in future when I get these units to fix is just do both of them and have done with it because maybe that was already broken on the last time when I actually had it last time and I just didn't notice or maybe it's just since failed I, it could just be unlucky but that stretching in there is a, is a clue that it's gone so I'm just going to redo this side this side's good because I did that one last time then this one should be good again. So I'm going to do a playlist for these things because I've got a few repairs on these now. So I'm going to, there's going to be a playlist at the end of the video for these units. So if you're interested in looking at the other ones of these and the other little things that have been done to these to get them working, it seems to be a commonly a problem is the most common is, is the wires themselves. It seems to be the thing that crops up a lot. So that's what I'm expecting this to be as well. Well, I can see it's moving, so I know it's going to be this one. So I'll chuck a place at the end, so check that playlist out if you want to see more of these videos on these particular units. Just trying to cut through this carefully because there's a rubber sleeve inside which I don't want to damage because that's the actual wither seal. This is just a strain relief and um, they don't strain relief very well because they're too stiff so the wires break right here at the end of the relief. So it seems kind of pointless. The actual bit of sleeving I'm putting on is actually working better than the original strain relief so because it's got some flex in it. Maybe it's because of age, I mean, maybe they're right when they're new, I, I don't know, but uh, I just know right now they're no good. Get this cut off, here we are, pull this apart, and pull this wire back, cut it all off, that sort of stuff, and get it back together. I'm going to be kind of skipping through a lot of this because I've covered this previously in other videos, alright, so I'm going to slide this up the sleeve. A bit of silicon, just go around it like this and just wrap the sleeve, and um, that'll mean I can then slide the sleeve down without destroying it. At least that's the plan. There we go, started getting the sleeve down. So I'll put it down to about here so it's nicely out the way. Now we can check the wire just to be absolutely sure that I'm right. I'm going finger up here. Yep, right there. That's where it's broken. Clip, snap, and there we go. One burnt out wire. Easy as that. Let's get this thing fixed. So if you want more detail about what I'm doing and, and why, then check out the other videos because so I've already covered this pretty well previously in other videos. This is basically a repeat of what I've done before. So it's pretty straightforward really. Get this hooded through. I also need to get some heat shrink. Get that on there before I forget about it. About that, I don't know, about that long. Piece about this, and need to slide this down the cable as well, get that ready. Just slide it down, slide this back through the fitting, then pull it up through the fitting so I can solder it on. There we go. That's ready to go. Now I've got to get this one off here. So my iron's currently set at 380 degrees C with this particular tip, so it takes quite a bit to get this off with quite a big thermal mass, but you can do it. Here we go, that's off. Put some fresh solder on. Stick that on here. I'm rushing because I've got a lot to get done today. It looks a bit dull, isn't it? What do you reckon? Might be without solder. If it might be lead free in there, I really don't know. So, or I think I'll clean that solder off and I'm happy with that. I want a good result, not a bad one. So, let's get some. I was gonna, wasn't going to use wig, but I think I will. It wastes a lot of wig to use, to using this, but. Okay, that'll do. Good enough. Fresh stuff. Wipe back on again. Try 
trying not to move, I was just calling. There we go. That looks better. It's not dull now. Right, that's that bit done. Right, so I've just pulled the wire back through, put this fitting back on again. The sizes of these should still be okay because I resized these connections last time. If you don't know what I'm talking about with that, then check out my previous videos when I'm talking about the sizing of the connections. Can we get that into the housing. Okay, that's good. Hey, shrink on. So shrink it. Then I'll test it and it should be good. I'm 90% sure it'll be good. So this heat shrink, uh, it's much thinner than the original sleeve in this on here. It actually um, is much more flexible. So it works a lot better as a strain relief than the original stuff does. So I'm quite happy to do it this way though. It's not exactly the same as the factory. Um, I think the factory doesn't actually work very well. Because otherwise wires are breaking so prolifically at the end of the strain relief. So, that's that. Oh, that's split there. That's not really good. Should be alright though. Might stick some of my, um, must have had a little nick in it or something that's made it pull back. I'll stick a bit of this on there just to make sure it uh, doesn't fall off. There you go, that'll do. I was going to pull the whole thing apart again and do the whole thing again for the sake of a little hole in the heat shrink. So, as I said in the last video, when you think about it, Although it's got the rubber sleeve in there to help hit, uh, strain relief and waterproof this end of it, this end isn't waterproof at all because it's just got this piece which screws in, there's no seals in it. This is not waterproof, so this end being waterproof is kind of pointless really because the water you get in this end it doesn't really matter. So I don't think waterproof is really an issue to be honest. But um, you know, this will still be fine. It's you know, strain relief, see that? That's actually got some flex on it now, right? It's taking a bit of stress off it. Whereas before, it wasn't like that at all. Right, let's test this thing. So I've got it hooked up. Let's just do a verification first of the resistance. 20 ohms on my resistor here. Okay. Once I've got this thing powered up, then obviously no touchy. You touch that, it's 100 volts, potentially. You know, this end's 100 volts. These are 100 volts. So no touchy once I actually get the thing powered up. Okay, but that's first verification. We have a resistor of about 20 ohms. All right, so now we're going to do AC voltage measurements on here. We'll power this up, we've already got the plug plugged in, it's powered up, so what happens, first thing is it's got to see that the coil is even there. So we've got a green light so far, then hopefully we'll get the blue light, uh, the green light over here and the, and the arrow. Yep, cool, that's seen the coil, so it's, it's, I can see it's there. So if I now come over the other side here and push the start button, it should start welding, you'll see 100 volts come up on this end, and we'll be good. And that's, if that's the case, then I'm going to say this one's fixed. Without even opening the case up on this one, because it's just the cables again. Alright, ready? There we go. Getting 98 volts. As expected, 98 volts. So it's holding fine. Turn it off. So that's doing the job. It's lasted for a while. Voltage is gone, so that's nice and warm. I'm not going to touch it because it's going to get hot. This is a big variable resistor. I think it's 50 ohms, I think it was. 50 ohms? Yeah. 50 ohm variable resistor, so I can actually put this anywhere along this beam I want in that resistance. 98 volts across 20 ohms gives us 500 watts. Excellent, that's working properly. That's exactly what it should be doing. So, this is another repaired unit. Happy with that? Don't forget to subscribe, put the bell icon, that sort of stuff. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Very important. And have a chat down below in the comments if you're interested as well. You know talk about various aspects and so there will be a playlist at the end of these other units so make sure you check out the cards at the end of the video um, and maybe even a link down below in the description linking to the playlist for these units and well electrofusion stuff I'm fixing as they come by I'm not doing much of them I'm well, not doing many of them I should say I thought it'd be interesting videos you know unusual catch you later thanks for watching and I'll see you next one check down below thumbs up subscribe all that stuff Bye.